Hey there, Anna McKinley here. Welcome again to my channel and welcome to episode 17 out of my 100 day challenge to bring you a new great piece of content every day for 100 days to help you create an awesome life for yourself. So this is the third of a three part series that I've been doing on how you can free your mind. Yes, that's right. We're going matrix free your mind, free your life. And look, just a quick recap. In the first part, we talked about our fundamental freedom, our most fundamental freedom that no one can ever take away from you. And that is your freedom to choose how you respond internally to the stuff that happens in our external world. You always have the freedom to choose your response and particularly your emotional response to the stuff that goes on in our world. And through that, you get to choose your reality, which is so cool. You get to choose your experience of life. The second piece of the puzzle that we focused on was that actually we create the level of freedom we experience in life and our, and our quality of life through where we put our focus. We can focus on the things that keep us constrained and the things that make us feel stuck. And when we do that, they begin to just become a bigger and bigger influence in our lives. They loom so large, it seems we can never escape from them. Or we can choose to put our focus on the aspects of our life in which we do have freedom, to focus on the freedoms we have, the choices we have, and the things that are already working because what we focus on expands. And in doing that, we're actually choosing more freedom and it opens us up to more possibilities. Instead of saying, I can't do something because I don't have enough time, I don't have enough money, whatever it is, we actually can turn things around and say, how can I? And it's that change in perspective which opens up opportunities that we might never otherwise become aware of. So those are the first parts. Now it's for the third piece of the puzzle. And that actually is about how do we step into the opportunity? Because for many of us in life, what we've practiced, and I used to do this all the time, was that when I felt stuck, when I felt I didn't have any freedom over my time or over my other choices, instead of looking to myself, because, hey, I'm the one with no, victim, no, no freedom here. I'm the victim. Instead, I would look to others and I'd place the blame on them. My boss, my job, my spouse, family expectations, other stuff. Even, I even blamed my kids at times for my feelings that I lacked freedom. In doing that, I was distracting myself from the real issue. And the real issue is that we cannot grasp and experience more freedom in our lives unless and until we give ourselves the permission to do it. We have to give ourselves the permission to do things differently, to think differently, to act differently, and yes, to take on some personal responsibility for our lives. Because here's the thing, it's the stories we tell ourselves about our circumstances that creates our experience of the circumstances. Often we feel that we're stuck in a box and that walls are being built around us and they can feel very real. But in many cases, at least in part, some of those walls are walls that we've actually built in our mind. And if we give ourselves permission to think and act in a different way, then we can shift them and open up the door and step outside. Let me share with you some examples, and these are real examples that come up actually quite frequently with clients I work with. I never have enough time for myself to work on my passion projects. I'm always doing things around the house. So I'll hear that from someone, and then in almost the same conversation, I'll hear them say, oh, yeah, but I can't sit still and do nothing because I feel guilty if I'm just sitting down, not doing anything. Feels like it's wasted time. So we have that contrast. Actually, I don't have time because I'm always doing everything, but I don't give my permission to stop because I feel guilty when I do. That comes from us, right? 
Here's another example that I hear. I'm interested if any of these resonate with you. Uh, I'm always overwhelmed because I have so much to do and too little time to do it in. But at the same time, I can't ask for help. I'll feel like a failure if I get other people to help me do things. I have to do everything myself to be successful. Right? <laughs> I've actually had people say that to me, believe it or not. Um, if I ask for help, it's admitting that I can't do it all myself and I feel like a failure. And yet, when I try to do it all myself, I don't have enough time and I don't have the freedom to do the things that I want. Right? Right. So this, that's actually one that comes up quite a lot with, um, with a wide variety of people. Let me try another one on and see if it resonates with you. Problem is that I never have the time for my own passion projects because I'm always doing things for other people. Other people are always making demands on my time. And then at the same time, yeah, but I just don't feel that I can say no because isn't that rude? So we're not giving ourselves permission to put up boundaries and protect our own time and then complaining that we don't have the time freedom to focus on the things that we want. So these are just a few examples. Maybe you're starting to see the pattern here because actually, while it feels that other things and other people are imposing, other demands, the demands of business, the demands of household, the demands of other people, sometimes it's work, actually what's stopping us from breaking free of that is our internal narrative about it. It's rude to say no, I can't say no. I feel guilty if I'm doing nothing or if I'm not doing that. If, if I'm doing something else when this household chores that need to be done, and so on. Right. So how are we going to create more freedom unless we address that? The first step for us to create more freedom, and this goes to time freedom, and also plays to financial freedom, because if we're going to break out of our existing patterns, then it requires us to do things differently. If we're going to do things differently, the prerequisite, the thing that must happen first, is that we must start thinking differently. Think differently, do differently. And in order to do that, it starts with us giving ourselves permission to make the change, to change our internal stories and our internal narratives. Right? Another example, I mean, many, many people that I've come across have no time freedom, believe they have no time freedom because we've got the nine-to-five job. I don't have the time freedom to be there for my family or to build my side hustle business or whatever because I'm stuck in the nine to five. And yet, at the same time, an internal narrative that says, but I can't go to my boss or, or my job and ask for more time flexibility or ask to work from home or ask to change my hours. I, they might say no. Right? Oh, hold on a second, then we're in no different place than we are right now. <laughs> and yet we have this narrative. So these are kinds of things that I've heard um, time and again. Interested if any of them resonate with you. Because look, it's so easy for us to blame the external things, the job, the boss, the spouse, the kids, the household, other people, right? But they can't do anything to create more freedom for us, or help us create more freedom, if we don't let them. It has to start with us giving ourselves permission to let the change happen. To think differently, to do things differently, and importantly, giving ourselves permission to ask for help where necessary to create that extra freedom, that extra flexibility, that extra time, whatever it is, right? I remember actually that you know when this shift happened for me and it was it was a number of years ago and it was when I was still stuck in a job and with my young kids and running the household and my husband was in a very demanding job at the time and so I honestly did believe that I had to do everything myself there was no help available and I just had to suck it up <laughs> really um, to, yeah, and, and, and that I had no choice. And because I had that belief, I didn't give my permission to ask myself permission to ask for help from anybody. 
it wasn't until I realized that actually I'd created the situation myself and gave myself permission to ask for a small change, a small change that would give me just one evening off. And then that opened up the possibility and the confidence to create some more flexibility and then to create some more freedom and then to create some more freedom. And my whole life has changed as a result because once we start taking down the walls that we ourselves have put up, then we open up a whole expanse of new horizons and new possibilities. So here's a little formula, if you like. Choose, know you have the freedom to choose how you respond emotionally to your external circumstances. Start to be aware of all the freedoms that you actually have in your life right now. And as I've said, there might be really tiny freedoms. You have the freedom to choose which shoe you put on first. <laughs> or what, whether you'll drink coffee or tea. You know, all of these little things, they're all examples of freedom. The more we focus on freedom, the more we become attuned to it and it expands in our life. And on top of that, give yourself the freedom, the permission to do things differently and give yourself the permission to ask for help if necessary. So once we've given ourselves that permission, it actually becomes as simple as identifying, well, what is one small shift that you can either make now or that you can ask someone to help you with so that you can make it now? Just one small baby step shift to create just a little bit more space or freedom. It might be as simple as giving yourself permission to sit down and relax and do nothing for half an hour. It might be asking for help so someone else can keep an eye on the kids so that you can do something else. Or having that conversation with the boss about working a bit more flexibly or maybe having a day working from home, depending on what your circumstances are, right? And if you're your own boss, <laughs> that's an easier conversation to have. Uh, and then just do it. At the end of the day, all of this boils down to creating, you know, choosing the narrative, the stories, the perspective in our mind, and then acting, because nothing's going to change without action. So look, there's a few things in there. I hope that there's been some little aha moments for you. The general theme of this three-part series has been actually when it comes to freedom, Yes, it starts with freeing the mind. To a very large extent, the amount of freedom that we enjoy in our life, time freedom, financial freedom, and other things, is actually something that we have a large amount of control over, and it starts in here. So hopefully I've given you some ideas that you can start to play with to actually create a greater sense of freedom and greater freedom in your life so that you can enjoy the great awesome life that you deserve so anyway i hope that uh, that that's benefited you feel free to come and join me on my facebook page or comment underneath the youtube video leave your comments leave your thoughts i'd love to hear what they are and i look forward to seeing you in the next episode <laughs> bye for now